me what's your last name. We got one. The same. Uh, what did you do?
female on this trip, so you guys behave yourselves. Now, more than anything else, I mentioned uh, often people will say, thank you, for, thank you for your service, and we certainly mean that. But you guys, my brothers who are of the age who went to Vietnam, this is a special day for you and for all of us. But uh, in many ways, the words that should have been spoken five decades ago, we say from the bottom of our heart, welcome home. What, what is in store for you today is just spectacular. Today is about respect for you, it's about thanks for you, and it's about our great country. And uh, I think what I'd like to do is uh, invite you to sing along with me, and let's do that great Irving Berlin classic, God Bless America. All right? Are you a good voice? Here we go. God bless America.
The United States Marine Corps War Memorial, dedicated on November 10, 1954, honors all Marines who have given their lives in defense of the United States since 1775. This memorial was inspired by the iconic photograph of the second flag raising atop Mount Suribachi on February 23, 1945, during the Battle of Iwo Jima in World War II, taken by Associated Press combat photographer Joe Rosenthal. Although originally thought the six men captured in the photo consisted of five Marines and one Navy corpsman, interviews, research, and analysis of other photographs and video footage taken around the same time of the second flag raising has brought about identification changes for historical accuracy. In conclusion, it was determined the six men captured in Rosenthal's photo were all Marines. As you make your way around the north side of the memorial, it appears as if the flagpole is being raised yet again, as it was on Mount Suribachi. The United States Air Force Memorial, dedicated on October 14, 2006, honors the service and legacy of the men and women of the United States Air Force and its heritage organizations. At the heart of the memorial, one will find a triangular prow bound by three stainless steel spires. The inspiration for the three spires soaring into the sky are fashioned after the contrails of the Air Force Thunderbirds as they peel back in a precision bomb burst maneuver during their flight demonstration. These spires are asymmetrical and dynamic, ranging in height from 230 to 270 feet tall causing the view of the memorial to be different at every angle. The number three is also resonant with significant associations for the Air Force, including their three core values of today. Integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Granite walls to the north and south contain inscriptions describing the valor and core values of aviation pioneers supporting the Air Force and its ancestor military organizations. Positioned in front of the southern wall stands a bronze honor guard, maintaining a constant salute day and night to all members of the United States Air Force and its predecessor organizations. In front of the northern wall stands a glass contemplation wall, a glazed independent panel portraying the missing man formation, flown in honor of a fallen Air Force member, symbolizing the presence of all those who were gone. The Honor Guard traces its beginnings to the year 1948, when an elite ceremonial unit was activated within the Air Police Squadron. This specialized police unit was tasked with representing the Air Force in funerary and ceremonial functions throughout the National Capital Region. Since then, the Honor Guard has grown to include airmen from all Air Force specialties and continues to represent the nation in high-level ceremonies throughout the world. As in every Air Force mission, the drill team executes each movement with flawless timing and exacting precision. Throughout the performance, airmen will engage in dangerous weapon exchanges and complex movements that require absolute focus. However, I encourage you to applaud and cheer at any time. You will not break their concentration. Accelerate change. The Air Force continues to evolve into a stronger and more efficient fighting force. The drill team is no exception to this. Our OLD team is regularly revised and improved upon one tradition and one system for use of the drill team platform. Watch the domino effect created by the quick reflex of the drill team members and then make some noise and show some love. The louder you cheer, the harder they will perform. And now, led by Captain Ron 
Ryan Johnson. Goal, United States Air Force Honor Guard, Drill Team! The World War II Memorial, dedicated on May 29, 2004, honors the service of 16 million members of the Armed Forces of the United States of America, the support of countless millions on the home front, and the ultimate sacrifice of more than 400,000 Americans. Through stone architecture and bronze sculptures, the World War II Memorial recognizes the way America served, honors those who fell, and recognizes the victory they achieved to restore freedom and end tyranny around the globe. Twelve bronze bas reliefs decorate the walls of the memorial on either side as one approaches the ceremonial plaza. These reliefs chronologically highlight the experience of the war on the home front, placed in context with the battles being waged on land, sea, and air. Fifty-six granite columns representing each U.S. state and territory at the time of World War II, ring an impressive rainbow pool located in the heart of the memorial. Quotes by presidents, authors, and commanding officers, references to theaters, campaigns, and battles, and two massive victory pavilions representing the Atlantic and Pacific theaters, chronicle the efforts Americans undertook to win the war. Within the Victory Pavilions, a large rendering of the World War II Victory Medal is centered upon the memorial floor. Directly above the Victory Medal, four stately American bald eagles, symbols not only of our nation, but of the armed forces, holds aloft an ancient symbol of victory, a laurel wreath. 
As one glances over the rainbow pool from the balcony of the Victory Pavilions, your field of vision is captured by a wall of 4,048 gold stars on the west side of the memorial, reminding all of the supreme sacrifice made by over 400,000 Americans to make that victory possible. This memorial thus stands as a testament and tribute to the legacy of the greatest generation. Retire the colors. Veterans, hand salute. Ready? Two. That concludes today's ceremony, veterans. It was an honor to be out here and be your speaker for us. Don't move. Don't move. Um, and again, we want to welcome you home. And thank you for your service. And thank Chicago, Honor Flight Chicago, for sponsoring you and having you here to get to see this memorial and how the people are taking care of you. 
Please stand fast for your door session. Thank you. The Korean War Veterans Memorial, dedicated July 27, 1995, commemorates the sacrifices of millions of Americans and Allied partners who fought during the Korean War. The memorial's Wall of Remembrance contains over 2,500 photos, selected from the National Archives, of men and women who served in the Korean War. 19 stainless steel statues, standing in a field of juniper bushes and polished granite strips, represents a platoon on patrol marching through rice paddies and over rough Korean terrain. Each statue stands seven feet tall, weighing nearly 1,000 pounds, representing the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps, and are proportionate to the percentage of participation in the Korean War by each branch. When combined with their reflection in the Wall of Remembrance, there is a total count of 38 figures representing the 38th parallel, forming the border between North and South Korea. Built in the style of the Parthenon, the Lincoln Memorial, dedicated May 30, 1922, has inspired generations. A 19-foot-tall statue of President Abraham Lincoln gazes out from the solemn chamber of his memorial. Lincoln's imposing temple is surrounded by 36 columns, each representing a state in the Union at the time of his death in 1865. The interior of Lincoln's memorial features inscriptions of this revered president's most important speeches, the Gettysburg Address, and his second inaugural speech. Above these speeches are the murals named Emancipation and Unity. On the wall behind the Lincoln statue is an inscription that reads, In this temple, as in the hearts of the people for whom he saved the Union, the memory of Abraham Lincoln is enshrined forever. Talk for an hour. Yeah. Any talks for? Yeah. That 
I don't know, we can read it now. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall, dedicated on November 11, 1982, honors the men and women who served in the Vietnam War from 1959 until 1975. The Memorial Wall chronologically lists the names of more than 58,300 Americans who gave their lives in service to their country, fighting in Vietnam and Southeast Asia, as well as those who were listed as missing in action during the war. Two arms consisting of 70 panels each form a wide V shape with the eastern wall extending toward the Washington Monument and the western wall directed toward the Lincoln Memorial. Next to the names of those declared fallen, you will find a diamond shape etched in the granite. Next to those considered missing in action, you will find a cross. If a person currently marked as MIA returns alive, a circle would be etched around the cross. If the service member's remains are identified, a diamond would be superimposed over the cross. The In Memory plaque, dedicated on November 10, 2004, honors the men and women who served in Vietnam and later died from causes related to the war. Dedicated in 1993, the Vietnam Women's Memorial, portraying three women caring for a fallen soldier, pays tribute to the more than 265,000 women who served during the Vietnam era and is the first memorial in Washington, D.C., honoring women's military service. Young, armed, and wearing jungle combat gear, the Three Servicemen statue, dedicated on November 11, 1984, stands as a permanent watch over the wall. Veterans have stated, while there are distinguishing characteristics for each man, they still feel like they could be any soldier. It was the first representation of an African American on the National Mall. This group is from Chicago. Oh my gosh, Minnesota. Hey, my, I've got my Legion cap here. I've got to go with you guys. <laughs> now I lost it. I heard it. Alright, hold on. Right here. So, John Nurse, yes. you put your piece of paper up there. Jerry's got the ladder right here. Guys, I'm going to tell you, this pan these panels are very, very hot. Yeah. And which one did you want to leave? Uh, well, I don't know. What do you think? This one here from the memorial? Yeah, this one. Opened in 2003, the Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center, located next to Dulles International Airport in Northern Virginia, serves as a partner facility to the National Air and Space Museum, located in Washington, D.C. 
The two locations together attract more than 8 million visits per year, making the National Air and Space Complex the most popular museum in the United States. This expansive museum consists of three hangars. The Boeing Aviation Hangar houses dozens of historically significant aircraft and artifacts, including the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird and the Concorde. The James S. McDonald Space Hangar houses dozens of spacecraft, including the Space Shuttle Orbiter, Discovery. A more recently added hangar, the Mary Baker Engine Restoration Hangar, is where scientists and engineers work to restore artifacts from the Air and Space Museum's massive collection. And the next moon mission is supposed to have made better ones. Honor Flight Chicago, Flight 104. What a day. We had three generations of senior war heroes walking arm in arm in our nation's capital, touring the memorials that were built in their honor. We asked you to get up early, but boy, did we see a lot. 
the Marine Corps Memorial, the Air Force Memorial, the Air Force Honor Guard Drill Team, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, the Korean War Memorial, and the World War II Memorial. I'm routinely asked how we pull it all off, and the answer is pretty simple. We hands down have the best volunteers in the world. From our orange shirts, our red shirts, our blue shirts, and our green shirts, they all come together to put this day on for our heroes. I just want to thank them and let them know how much we appreciate their efforts. This is our 14th season and we're approaching 10,000 senior war heroes brought to our nation's capital. Since we began this journey in 2008, we've flown one airline, Southwest Airlines, so we'd also like to thank our wonderful partners at Southwest Airlines. But most importantly, I'd like to thank our gray shirts, our World War II, our Korean War, and our Vietnam War heroes. I'd like to read a, a quote that General Omar Bradley uh, said, the man who planned Normandy invasion, reflecting on war. He said, this nation will always need those who thinks in terms of service to their country, not in terms of their country's debt to them. We have 111 of those fine individuals on this plane with us today. And I encourage, I encourage them to keep it going. This doesn't have to be a one-day experience. Wear your service with pride. Tell your stories. They deserve to be told and we deserve to hear them. And there are so many ways to stay engaged with Honor Flight Chicago. Please visit our website. We have programs like the, the relatively new Operation Education, which brings our veterans into the classrooms, over 130 of them, across the Chicago land area uh, to tell those stories, interview projects. So please check that out and stay involved and wear your service with pride. A few years back, I remember getting off of a flight and hearing someone ask a veteran how their day was. How was your day of honor? And that veteran simply replied, he thought about it and he said, I didn't think anyone cared. Hopefully, after today, you realize that there are a lot of us who do care and care greatly. So when you were stationed overseas, across the United States, or wherever it was, close to home, besides clean shower, what were the two words you liked hearing the most? Mail call. Mail call, mail call, mail call. We have mail call for each and every one of you. Stephen Blair, mail call. Mr. William Boyles, mail call. Mr. Richard Bracamontes, mail call. Mr. Timothy Brown. Mr. Joseph Valero. Mr. Joseph Caldwell. Mr. Mateo Campos, Jr. Mr. Edward Register. Mr. Clement Reynolds. Edward Robinson. Mr. Laurie Robinson. 
Mr. Edward Rooney. Mr. Robert Ross. Mr. George Sappho. Mr. James Croc. Mr. Robert Kopinski. Mr. Kenneth Kurkowski. Mr. William Lapp. Mr. Donald Lehman. Mr. Kazmir Lewandowski. Mr. Michael Wheat. Mr. Ron Wilner. Mr. Lionel Woods. There's two of those. Okay. Mr. Jesse Wren. Mr. James Smith. Take a look out through windows. There's going to be a special display.
I do. 